I thought I'd answer something very controversial in academia and political sphere. I'm afraid that even uh, Celeb Malpin would even disagree with me on this and some others. But that is, is fascism a variant of capitalism? Or is fascism, fascism just capitalism? If you ask any academic, they're going to be incredibly divided upon this question. If you look at the Wikipedia page for economics of fascism, it says, quote, Historians and other scholars disagree on the question of whether a specifically fascist type of economic policy can be said to exist. Baker argues that there is an identical economic system in fascism that is distinct from those advocated by other ideologies, compromising essential characteristics that fascist nations share. However, Payne, Paxson, Sternhell argue that white, while fascist economics share some similarities, there is no distinctive form of fascist economic organization. Even Gerald Feldman and Timothy Mason argue that fascism is distinguished by an absence of coherent economic ideology and an and a absence of serious economic thinking. So, if you read that just introduction, you only have this character named Baker, um, who is not giving me the citation at the moment, says, yes, fascism is outside of socialism and capitalism. It is therefore a third position. But Payne, Paxson, and Sternhall argue that, um, that it is likely uh, capitalism or that they share similarities and um, they're going to be either socialists or capitalists. It's just rebranded as fascism. And of course, Feldman and Mason is probably fascism is incoherent, violent terrorism. Out of those three, likely the later two is arguing that fascism is an uh, incoherent system and that you can't really uh, trust it at all. You could even argue and say that the greatest turmoil among left-wing, right-wing dialectic infighting is whether capitalism is fascism or fascism is capitalism, vice versa. Stanley G. Payne argues that fascism is a widely counter movement against liberalism, capitalism, and socialism, however, may have the characteristics of capitalism in a large-scale setting, or pretty much counter to it in its own variation. Even if you ask Richard Wolff, Wolff, I believe, had an argu uh, article that he argued that the fascists were merely more than just individuals who were trying to promote capitalism and really actually had nothing to do with racial awareness or nationalism because that's just racist. So it is a very popular belief that fascism is capitalism and vice versa. Now with my opinion regards to this, I am about to say it right now, so uh, drum roll please. Uh, I think or I believe fascism is not capitalism. That isn't to say that now I'm a third positionist and I'm basically Keith Woods advocate or supporter that, that has means nothing. I just believe that fascism is its own category. Maybe I don't mean to LARP or say that culture thug, the YouTuber has something to do with it or Julius Evelyn mysticism. It's just that fascism cannot be capitalism because Fascism is incredible, ho is incredibly hostile against any form of economic system outside the worship of one's own people, interests, and basically race. I think of it more as Heideggerianism in a totalitarian form. And this is why it has become de facto the far-right extremism. Now, I do believe that Fascism is attractive because it comes from skinhead culture, the interest that it's anti-communism, and that it just offends people. This totalitarian nature of a homo-nationalist union or some manner bun is exciting and arousing. But I guess so is communism in some way, or any paternal system. It's just that fascism has always been associated with that Tom Metzger uh, biker, biker background. 
and less about this kind of esoteric thing where people are all working together for faith, folk, and family, as what Matthew Heimbach used to say, if he's a thing anymore. I mean, even Eric Stryker tends to believe that uh, fascism is the answer against capitalism and communism. Most internet self-identified fascists, I believe, are largely ignorant when it comes to economics. I think the only thing they think about is race. If you tell a fascist if uh, capitalism is failing, how do you solve it? And they probably will say, replace all the alien people with uh, our people, and then, boom, it's solved. Well, I could definitely see that kind of uh, problem, that paradox, because what do the capitalist class do right now in higher education? Uh, higher education wants everyone to be STEM and don't read Asian studies or women's studies or black studies or Marxism. And everybody wants to be a STEM major, and then you go in the workplace, and then you find some job out in Franklin, Tennessee, being a programmer for this, and hence continuing the boring, mundane circle of life, middle-class fancy lifestyle. I think fascism thinks the same way. I think that maybe that race has something to do with solving bigger issues that fascism cannot understand. So I, I understand that clearly, and that's my criticism with those people who associate with the right, is because they think race is more important than economics. When really, I would help the fascist and say, well, capitalism is the source of what you may call, quote-unquote, anti-white politics. Because people profits before one's own race is basically the real enemy. It's not some alien person behind it and that you have to replace capitalism with all your people and then it's solved it's kind of silly but it is also silly when a communist and a leftist ignores race and denies race in its full extent that they're against capitalism that they're for a syndicalist society and then they say there's no such thing as race you know, and then you have the, the token white gentrifier and his black girlfriend living in uh, West Philadelphia. Woohoo, right? And so there's almost a yin and yang here where fascists deny economics, you know, in favor of race, and the communists deny race, thinking economics is better. It's as if this is almost a centrist or moral argument in favor of fighting for a system that could synergize both. And it seems like people get lost in this whole taxonomy of things. So any debate will be lively if you bring up, is fascism capitalism? Probably local Antifa will say yes. And then otherwise, you might get the centrist, reactionary, right wing or intellect say, no, it's not. But it seems to be so redundant to say, Everything I don't like is literally capitalism, or everything I literally don't like is a race that doesn't belong to me. Again, I'm, I'm not being a liberal centrist, even though it sounds like an argument a liberal centrist would make. I also really feel that no one in these circles are literally addressing economics and race, and even sexuality, as a factor of our downfall. I really dislike factions of the left that want total freedom because most anarchists or even people like Bob Black think that if you abolish work, people are more happy with their life. And I also despise many on the far right that thinks things could be so redundant to being a classist and arguing for the the boring Canton, Ohio, middle-class lifestyle, as I, I believe that the bourgeoisie and the middle class should be eliminated, and I think it's an error in history in the past century. It is really easy today to make up a third-position ideology. In fact, any ideology. You can say you are a goth gamer Mexican girl who collects bottle caps who believes in syndicates fascism and create your own Facebook page and then before you know it you have 40 others who are goth girls into bottle caps on your page 
And subcultures remain a huge part of what the internet does to people and also a byproduct of capitalism and creating consumer culture. And so I'm very wary again, not to be an arrogant centrist, but when people use terms like third positionist, distributist, white nationalist, communist, these terms are facetious. Like a girl on her bang bros set about to do a porno and asking what positions will she do in this film I'm about to record. And um, people believe in the frivolous things. Uh, you know, I could pretend to be an autistic, uh, soft-spoken, Jared Taylor, intellectual Charles Murray, individual, or Ryan Folk going, statistics, yada, yada, yada. Or I could be an animated re-education chad guy and say this and that and this is what every leftist has been doing you know but either or either or these characters are trying to get you into their subculture and it's less about thinking as an intellectual being and fighting for what you want in other words that the artist or not even the artist the the exploiter under the system needs to exploit individuals in order to get what they want across. And less about you making friends with new people and you just being a byproduct to the system to be exploited. We are a very isolated society. And, you know, it's creepy to know that people like Celeb Malpin goes every day and records himself for three hours without a script and just rambles on about what books he read and I guess that makes him a free PhD doctor right but you know getting into this theory of whatnot makes me feel I might as well go yes fascism is capitalism but at the same time people just believe things dogmatically and again as I said before we should understand people on a basis of who they are and not about consumers and wrongdoers and whatnot. I think of it like a supernatural yin and yang. You need this and you need that. If, if you're Stefan Molyneux and you're scared of communism, well, you're scared of your own sexuality. And if you are a communist, a scared of fascism, well, you need fascism in your life in order to understand that part of yourself you know this is kind of like this whole Freudian thing in a way where so much want to be anti-communist so much want to be anti-capitalist or even you know nationalists but no one understands why people just want to join a group that's tardy against our society so in, in other words we're all kind of these anarchist types if you want to know why it's so groggy or why my words are sludged. Um, I just had sex, so I have to apologize on the behalf.